Hey y'all, Patrick here with Vetted. Okay, you've seen the thumbnail, you've seen the title. This is kind of crazy. Tim Burchett, Congressman Tim Burchett, thinks that someone he's met with is a disinformation agent and that they don't know it. Now, we've got a list of seven people, okay, that could be this person. Um, we're going to go through uh, an interview he did with Sean Ryan, okay, in the Sean Ryan podcast, Um and look at different clips of the interview where he those people are mentioned and what he says about them to give more context to maybe help us understand who this person might be. So we're going to go through each one of them. All right. So stick with me here. Um, let's jump in. All right. So it kind of all started with this tweet I saw um, from Mike Colangelo. And he says, Temper Jet thinks that one of these individuals is a disinformation agent, but the individual doesn't know it. Here are the names that came up during the interview. Lou Elizondo, Christopher Mellon, Stephen Greer, Jeremy Corbell, George Knapp, Travis Taylor, and Brandon Fugel. Timbo also says that all of these individuals have given some legitimate information, though. Who do you think is the disinformation agent? All right, so we're going to take a look at this clip. I'm also going to put a timestamp for this particular clip in the original interview so you can see it for yourself because there's a little bit more to it than this uh but we've got a lot of clips to go through for this video so let's jump in and see how this all starts again i'll put a link to the full timber chat podcast uh on the sean ryan show by the way guys i'm gonna make another video tomorrow um so many bombshells dropped in this y'all i've got just notes okay just it's unbelievable. This probably, holy cow, honestly, this is probably one of the best interviews uh, about this subject you could watch right now. I, I can't think of a better one. It, it was absolutely phenomenal. There's so much dropped in here. Timber Chet, man, I mean, knocked it out of the park. This is just crazy. How, the entire thing is a bombshell, okay? The entire thing is a great discussion. Um, I was blown away by it. I was literally making notes every second about something new he's saying, something crazy, something insightful. Um, so we'll get into all that tomorrow, but we're just going to focus on this right now because everyone's talking about this. So let's jump in and see the original clip. Let's get going. Well, if you don't mind me asking, who is there anybody in particular that you think is a government disinformation agent? I'll just leave it at probably somebody you've mentioned in this conversation. Okay. So, real quick, I double-checked this list right here, okay? And Lou Elizondo, it's, it's right, except the Lou Elizondo name is a little interesting, and I'll explain that in a minute. That one, I'm not so sure should be on this list, and I'll tell you why here in a second. And the problem is they don't know it. That's, 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 the, that's the key to this whole thing, because they... How would they not know it? Because they're shown things that are false. Or there are people, they've brought people to them that are false. Or something's created. Because all they got to do is put a bug in somebody's ear and then they're, the government's getting another billion dollars to study some crazy project somewhere. Interesting. Does that make sense? It does. So it's, so the disinformation agent well, it does and it doesn't. So the a disinformation agent is there to one discredit somebody. Couple things: somebody. Disc get people off track, and two, to bring in more money. Just well, to keep the just to keep the fire lit enough, you know. Just get you salivating enough to where you're you're asking a lot of questions. Folks like myself, but I don't want any more money. I don't want the government to get. I don't. The government doesn't need enough. They need to go back, cut. Billions of dollars, trillions actually, but that's a sudden point. So, if they're discrediting somebody, how would that make more? How would that op how would that open people's checkbooks well, up? Well, if somebody getting close to the real issue, they'll discredit them. Other people, they'll let them go down the rabbit hole, so they can get the money. Gotcha, gotcha. So it's either one or the other. That's an important note to remember. Who do you think? In your opinion, you don't have to say it because I know you talk to all of these people. Who is the most, who has given you the most legitimate information? They all have. 
They've they all, all given me a piece of something that's that's real. Okay. All right. All right. I won't pry anymore with that. But um So that's interesting. Now there's other names that are brought up um in this interview, but Tim Burchett brings them up, right? If you remember at the beginning, let's watch the beginning real quick, just because this is important. Well, if you don't mind me asking, who is there anybody in particular that you think is a government disinformation agent? I'll just leave it at probably somebody you've mentioned in this conversation. Probably someone you've mentioned, right? He points to Sean Ryan. Now, Sean Ryan asked a government disinformation agent, right? So that's important to remember, too. Not a citizen. I don't know if that means something, but I have some theories even on that. So let's jump into these different people. All right. Um, And I'm just going to go by the timestamps. Now, let's go to the interview on YouTube. Um, If you guys want to find that original clip where he talks about the disinformation, it's at the end Um, and it. It is time stamp one hour, 10 minutes and 31 seconds to basically one hour, 12 minutes and 11 seconds. Okay, so that original clip that we just watched. Now, here uh, at 50 minute, at the 50 minute mark, um, he talks about Brandon Fugel and Travis Taylor. Now, watch how Sean Ryan brings them up. This is interesting. On our Skinwalker Ranch. Yeah, 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 yeah. I, I, yeah, I know all about. I know all about that. Sure. I mean, I, they have, they have. He's talking about Skinwalker Ranch. What they believe is government intimidation happening. They keep flying Blackhawks and, and CH-47s over the property. They found out one of the members on the scientific team, uh, Travis Taylor, is a plant from the Pentagon who is on the UAP UFO. I can't remember what program. Do you know anything about that stuff? So. Real quick, he says, Sean Ryan says they found out. I don't know who he's referring to. The Skinwalker team found out or someone else. I don't know. So if someone could tell me in the comments. Yeah. What sure. do you know about it? Well, see, that, that, that's where I go back. I just don't trust anybody in this thing. I mean, I, I, I just. So that's it and they go on to talk more about skinwalker ranch and that but his his response to both of those names is interesting now there's a later part uh, in the interview where they he talks about them coming over to his house and showing him stuff and all of that and i'm going to go over that stuff in tomorrow's video so again there's a ton of bombshells to go over it might it's going to be a long video tomorrow by the way just all the other bombshells but let's let's get into um, all right, so you've heard Brandon Fugel, Travis Taylor, and I, again, it's just important Timber Chet's responses to these names. All right, so let's go to Stephen Greer, and this is where Lou Elizondo's mention is interesting. So, okay, let me go to the one hour mark and 22 seconds. Bear with me here, y'all. All right, let's just start a little bit earlier here. I'm afraid to answer them. Yeah. I mean, <clears throat> who else have you met with? I believe you met with Dr. Stephen Greer as well. And so Stephen Greer. Even pretty well. He came over and um, he sent me a nice book, which I have looked at. Um, had dinner with him one one day. He's jacked. He's he's pretty muscular guy. Um, Louis Elizond- Elizondo, whatever. I can't ever say his name. What did you... So right there, Tim Burchett mentions Luis Elizondo first. Now, later, Sean Ryan mentions him, but I don't know. Is that important that Tim Burchett actually brings him up first? Right? So I don't know if that means anything. I almost think Lou Elizondo should be taken off the list, especially when you hear later on, I'm going to show you the clip of what Tim Burchett says about Luis Elizondo. All right, let's continue. What did Stephen Greer want to talk to you about? Just um, so real quick, everyone in that tweet that I showed you before from Mike Colangelo is saying Stephen Greer, Stephen Greer. Everyone's just like Greer, 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 Greer. It's him. I'm not so sure, actually. And I'm not saying I am a full supporter of Stephen Greer. I, it's man, it's just so hard to know. 
who is who and what is what and maybe some things they say is true and other things they embellish and this that doesn't mean that the core of what they're saying right so i don't know anyway let's continue about how the, the uh, he's involved with um this is what he tells me that uh some military outfits that are going in and going to get some of these craft get them out and um, more or less. And, uh, you know, I, I don't know. I don't know if civilians are messing with special ops. I don't know. I mean, they're operators. I don't know what all's going on with that. But he talked to me a little bit about that and, um, and some other things. And uh, What is it that he wants you to do with that information? I don't know. I think this is important, right? Than just to know it and just share it, maybe, and to uh, say that this is, it's real. But he has a different, you know. Everybody has a different belief in this thing. Yeah. And um, there again, I don't. I just believe something else is out there. I'm not. I don't. I don't get into all that. I don't. I don't condemn them for it. I don't. You know, I've got buddies of mine that are Jewish. I got buddies of mine that are Hindu. I've got some Muslim friends. You know, I don't. I don't condemn them. So, all right, so that's Stephen Greer's response on Stephen Greer. All right, let's go to where Sean Ryan does bring up Luis Elizondo. Uh, this is at the 107 mark to 109 we're going to look at. Uh, okay, yeah, 107. That's uh, right here. Close enough. I, I just can't, I can't, I can't, I just got too many of those. Yeah, I can't imagine the amount of, uh, I can't imagine you have the bandwidth to go through all of that. But um, Lou Elizondo, he's somebody I've tried to get on here numerous times. And uh, it's like, I don't think it's going to happen. I feel you, Sean. Uh, if you know anything about me and the show and how I got inspired to start this channel, um, I was supposed to interview Luis Elizondo last summer on my other channel, Lone Star Plate, and kind of got pushed, you know, back further and further because it was going to be about his book, his new book coming out. And I was told a lot of things about that. Um, I even made a video where the person who I was setting up the interview with, um, with them, who helps Luis Elizondo set up his interviews, um, had told me he was going to do this top secret he had this top secret project coming out and all this stuff too. And, uh, you know, 90 days, I was, you know, everyone was going to eat their words about Luis Elizondo and nothing came of it, you know? Um, and that was last summer. So I, I don't know. Uh, Luis Elizondo is just not really doing interviews. You know, I was told that and it's kind of still stayed true until his book comes out. So, uh, when is that coming out? I don't know. I was told last September, and it's over a year now, so who knows? Anyway, let's get back to this and what he says about Luis Elizondo, because it is important. What did, what did he want to talk to you about? Just about. Because this guy's supposedly He was on the inside. Important. They claimed they didn't have this organization, and yet he was, on the, he was, he was that organization. It was $11 million, I think, funded, I believe, at that time. Um, that funded, it was a senator out of uh, Nevada, Democrat, um, and he was part of the Skinwalker Ranch thing too. The research there, Harry Reid, believe he's talking about Harry Reid. Government did there, um, and he headed up that department. And they said, you know, basically it doesn't exist. And then, sure enough, there he was. He was running it. And, and you know, real quick, that person that was that I was contacting with to set up the interview with Luis Elizondo. Um, sent me uh, a, a letter from Harry Reid about Luis, Luis Elizondo that he did run that program, and that letter is kind of circulated around. Uh, but I was sent that letter personally myself uh, by this person to sort of back him up, right, like that he was um, telling the truth. So um, anyway. I'll put a video to those so you can get more context about that. I'll put them in the description. Again, you know, the, the, tail, does, the tail doesn't know what the, the rest of the, the body's doing, you know, and it's just, uh, and that's, that's government. That's compartmentalized government. That's, it's just too big. So what did, what did he want to 
talk to you about? I think Lou, he's, he's a dear friend, actually. Is he? he? Yes, he is. He, um, we stay in contact pretty regular, not telepathically, but... Um, That's sort of a, I guess there's something floating around that Luis Elizondo can, you know, remote view the future and speak telepathically with people. I, you know, I don't know. I can't confirm that. It's never come out of Lou's mouth. Um, not that we've seen it. It's been discussed in a book um, that, uh, you know, was mentioned at a dinner that supposedly Luis Elizondo told a story about getting his team out of some hairy situation militarily. I don't know where exactly, um, and that he used remote viewing or telepathy to get his team out safely. Uh, again, I, I don't know the veracity of that, so take that with a grain of salt. He, uh, I think he just wanted to encourage me. He just said, "Lee, you know, you're you're on the right path on this thing, dude. You're the you're you know, and and um, and I and I've, I've talked to him periodically about ideas I've had and people if I think that they are legit or these stories and uh, you know I say I sort of got this feeling on this one here and I don't know that I trust Lou because yeah. he was with the government but I do uh, uh, as much as I trust any of these cats but he's he's not he has not lied to me yet he's not heard me wrong and uh, you know he's he's the real deal and um, you know he was kept as a lot of them are, he was probably, a, I don't know that he was, I don't know he put his hands on anything physically, but he probably kept at arm's length that, you know, when he would get close, they would move it or do something else. Yeah. Have you met? Okay. So right here, he's going to, um, so that's Luis Elizondo. And again, I think Tim's responses are important to all of these names because this tweet that we were looking at before doesn't go into all of that, right? So people are just basing it off of this clip and then what they have preconceived notions about these people and they're just going with that. Uh, but hopefully this video will help you give you context on Tim's responses to these people, right, that Sean brings up. So anyway, th he's about to bring up Chris Mellon. So let's hear his response on Chris Mellon. With Chris Mellon? Chris Mellon is the, what is, what's his title? He's another he's another prominent figure of the yeah, space. Yeah, yeah, I know who he is. As a matter of fact, I'd like to get him for the committee, actually. I know I know I know who he is. Sure I do. Yeah. And um and there's several others. So that's interesting first that he doesn't really know what position he held um in government. Um Tim Burchett. But again, Tim Burchett's got all these names, all these people, all this stuff to know. It's a it's a lot, guys. Um, even for a congressman, for myself, I do this every day. It's still complicated. Um, anyone claiming to just know it all and know everything and know all that, they're lying. I'm sorry. They're just, they're lying. Um, it's hard to remember all the acronyms, the positions they held, when they held them. It's really hard. Um, so anyway, uh, let's go to the last two names on the list, Jeremy Corbell and George Knapp. Um, to see what is said, and it's pretty much, yeah, right here. Okay. Again, I'm allowed, I think they're going to give me one more committee meeting, which tells me the boat. This is also a bombshell uh, right here that I'm going to discuss in tomorrow's video. Nature of this thing. Yeah. You know, they, you're going to get us close, and then they're going to, they're going to move the target or whatever. So they're talking about, <clears throat> they're going to give Timber Chet one more hearing. Right, so we had the hearing in July. He's only going to get one more. What? What? I thought we were going to have all these first-hand witnesses come for all this stuff, disclosure. You know. Anyway, there's a lot on the video tomorrow about his comments on disclosure, the UAP Disclosure Act from Chuck Schumer, the NDAA, all of that. It's just not what you guys think it is, uh, which is interesting. Again, this is a bombshell interview. I recommend you watch the entire thing. Uh, when I started it, I couldn't stop it. Took me three hours to watch this thing, y'all. There's, there's so many notes I had to take, rewind. Did I hear that right? Write down name. You know, unbelievable. So I can't think of a better interview, honestly, in recent times than this. The whole thing, not just a clip. All right. So again, George, Jeremy Corbell, George Knapp, and then.
Jeremy Corbell and George Knapp who were George Knapp is one of those guys that I've ever since I was a kid I've I've known because he he did the little Lazar thing. He's the guy that broke Area 51. Really, he's the guy that said that it existed, and the government said it didn't. Again, and then real quick, guys, I think there was a cut there from Sean to his answer. So I'm not entirely sure, um, but that's possible. Sure, lo and behold, it existed. And you know, you want to go there now? You know, I mean, you could. I guess you know they'll they'll probably kill you if you cross over. But it's probably because they're testing our secret aircraft over there, you know, U2 type stuff. And yeah, I, I don't, um, but yeah, he's, uh, I, 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 I like him. Well, if you don't mind. So basically right here is when he starts asking the disinformation, uh, question is right here. So, um, again, those are all the names he brings up. Brandon Frugal, Travis Taylor, Stephen Greer, Luis Elizondo, Chris Mellon, Jeremy Corbell, George Knapp. Um, and that is correct. Those are the names. Um, and I don't know. I got to be honest. Um, what struck me as odd is, one, he doesn't say anything about Jeremy Corbell, but he's a citizen. So uh, the question that's asked is government disinformation agent. Let's just hear it again. Asking who is there anybody in particular that you think is a government disinformation agent? Government disinformation agent. Okay. So I just, even though he doesn't bring up Jeremy Corbell, I just can't believe it's him. He likes George Knapp, wants to get Chris Mellon to testify. So that doesn't make sense, right? Luis Elizondo, he's a close friend, says he, you know, maybe he shouldn't trust him, but that he does. He hasn't steered him wrong once, hasn't lied to him. Um, Stephen Greer, as much as, you know, people don't like him, um, he doesn't really have anything bad to say about that guy, right? What is odd is Travis Taylor and Brandon Fugel because Tim Burchett makes some comments about Skinwalker Ranch and what kind of, uh, you know what? Let me see if I can find that note because that's actually... Um, important. Okay. Yeah. Let's watch his thoughts on, on the show Skinwalker Ranch. So it's, it has me believe it is Travis Taylor. Uh, but who knows, right? It's, it's, it's very hard to tell. All right. 51, 52. This is his thoughts on the show itself. They said, there's some people like to come see you. And I said, okay. And I, I don't watch all these TV shows. Mm -hmm. I just, I just don't. I just don't because I don't, because it's just, it's just a rabbit hole. Mm -hmm. It's like, you know, going down this. We're gonna, we're gonna find it. This next week, we're gonna do this, you know, and then next week, it's, you know, um, it's like the Oak Island mystery. You know, it's like the most watched show on History Channel. But they, every year, it's like, we get there, and then oh, we'll see y'all next year. You know, it's, it's like who shot Jr. Yeah, and so. It's showing my age. But um, so I get it. They said, these guys want to come see me. And I said, well, that'd be great. I said, just tell them, come on up to the office. No, they don't want to come to the office. Was this the Skinwalker crowd? Okay. So, see, you blew my deal there. I was going to spring it on you. So you go, wow. So I'm at my house. It's a Saturday. And um, they come in. And they, they, they. I hit the gate button, they're inside, and I get out, and I look at them, and I go, that guy, that's the guy's from that TV show. And they came in, and I gave them all a Dr. Pepper, and we watched some stuff, and we talked about some stuff. But, you know, I, there's a lot of competition within the UFO community, too. There's a lot of people selling books, and a lot of people have podcasts, and there's, so there's, and there's a lot of animosity between the groups. And my, I see my job not as taking sides. Mm-hmm. That's also important, I think. So there's his thoughts on the show, right? It's kind of BS and weird and, you know, they're just always tricking you along. Um, whatever you think about that show, right? So I don't know. And the way that um, Sean Ryan brings up Travis Taylor, it does make me think it's him um, above anything else. Um, he does work in the government and has. Um, so I don't know. 
um, you know, could they be using that show to, you know, just make it sort of right. This sort of crazy show and it like, there's no legitimacy there. Right. That would be a good disinformation, uh, disinformation campaign. Right. Um, to, to have a skinwalker ranch show. Right. Um, that be it. It's like the entire show is basically around making people think it's a loony topic. Um, because it works, right? There's a lot of people like, yeah, that show's crazy. You might watch it for fun. Uh, but is that show really convincing anybody of anything? Right? Is anyone convinced by that? I think if you already are, you already believed it before you saw the show, but anybody knew, right? Um, so I don't know. I'm curious everyone's thoughts, um, on that, on this, who you think it could be. Um, and again, he's saying they don't know it. So, uh, you know, which kind of had me thinking it was Jeremy Corbell at the beginning. Uh, but again, the way Sean Ryan words it, government disinformation agent, but maybe Timber Chet doesn't respond to that. And he's just saying it's one of these guys. Um, I mean, Jeremy Corbell is fed a lot of stuff, right? And he has to be careful of what he releases and I, you know. I, I don't blame him. I mean, look, I'm not trying to judge anybody. Uh, that can't be easy, right? That I, to, to be honest, I, we got a small show and I get sent stuff all the time on Reddit, on just messages, whatever, um, email of, hey, look into this. Look at, look, you know, check this out. Look at this video. Look at that. Look at this, you know, whatever. Uh, I haven't had anyone sort of claiming like secret stuff or whatever, Um but it is interesting, right? They're always, you know, but listen, I'm always open to, to bringing it in and I'll decide. Um, but it is interesting. And I also found this point interesting at the end that Tim Burchett mentions, which is that everyone's competing, right? Because they got books, podcast, all this stuff. Um, and I've always thought that myself because I made a video last year, again, on my other channel that got me into this about, you know, looking into sightings and all of this and events and all this stuff, I was more like, well, let's look into the players, right? Who are the people? Because that's maybe where we'll get to the truth. Who are these people that are telling us these things? Right. And I always wondered why they don't mix, why they don't. I also wondered this and I can't be the only one. Right. Um, have you ever seen Luis Elizondo and Jeremy Corbell and George Knapp? sit down together, right? Or in Stephen Greer, right? Like these people, they just don't mix and match. Why is that? Um, why is there animosity? We're all trying to get to the truth, disclosure to the truth. It doesn't make any sense, um, right? So anyway, I cannot wait to see the comments uh, on this. Um, just curious what everyone's going to say and what y'all think. So, you know, Maybe there's more than one disinformation agent, right? But again, he's also said that everyone has given him stuff that's truthful. So pff, who knows, y'all? Um, again, I'm going to do another video tomorrow about t this Temper Chet interview. My apologies for the long video on this one. But again, tons of stuff to go over tomorrow, guys. I mean, he just, he talked about so much. Um, it's unbelievable. New, you know, new new stories, new sightings, new, that's just so much. Um, Tim Burchett is, uh, you know, a great person to have guys working on this. I got to say this interview opened my eyes to him in a different way that I, I hadn't seen. I already supported him, but now I really do support this guy. Um, so I'll get more into that tomorrow in that video, but thank you guys so much for watching. Let me know who you think it is and we'll see you guys in the next video. All right, Patrick here with vetted. Can't wait for tomorrow. Remember, every day's a gift. We'll see you tomorrow.